this time. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Just before our prayer, I wanted to remind those who are online givers recently because, you know, every few years you have to update your card. My card was updated and I had to update all the information for online giving. So if in this new year your card needs to be updated or has been updated, make sure you update that as well if you're one of our blessed online givers. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and thanksgiving for being God above all. Lord God, we're so thankful that we can't beat you giving. We want to try to give. We want to keep giving. We want our giving to reflect our faith, but we know no matter what it is we can give, we can't beat you. That you give us life, health, and strength. That you give us even when we don't deserve it, Lord God. And you give us even when we don't expect it, Lord God. With good measure, shaken down and running over, even other folks give unto our bosom. So now, Lord, bless this offering that's been shared, Lord God. Bless those who've given. Bless those who desired to give but did not have the ability on this day, Lord God. And bless our church, Mount Calvary Baptist, to continue to be good stewards over all of the resources that come through this church that might be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom in this church and in this community and in the world. We love you and thank you and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Lord, I 
him enough we couldn't thank him enough for those of us who've been having wonderful days we thank God for another day another chance at wonderfulness another thanks a day for magnificence another chance for glory another chance for praise for those of us who have rough days who have hard days and hard times we thank him for another day because it showed we made it through amen and if we made it through that day we can make it through the next day But one of those days that we make it through, the next one that comes might be that wonderful one, amen? Might be that glorious one. I don't know about you, but just in the past month, I've had some low days. 
some low days, but I thank him for taking me to another day, amen, that I could have a day that's higher. And there will be some low days to come, amen, but I thank God for that too. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Our foundational scripture for this year comes from Deuteronomy 2 and 3, and it says, You have been wandering around in this hill country long enough. Turn or go northward. Our theme for this year is what do we do in 2022? What do we do in 2022? Because faith without works is what? Dead. So we got to do something, y'all. When everybody else is doing what they need to do or think they need to do because of all the stuff that's going on, God's agenda doesn't change. God has been the same God yesterday, today, and forever through plagues, through sickness, through wars, through tribulation, through, through, through world floods. Amen. <laughs> God has still been God and we're still to be his people. And so we need to know what are we going to do in 2022. And the messages for this month are designed to answer that question. And the first thing that we do in 2022 that we learned last week is we need to turn northward. We need to go, go northward. We need to move forward. And with three things that we learned last week about moving forward, we need to not go back. Mm -hmm. Don't turn back. Don't go back to that Egypt slave. Don't go back to the slavery we had here. Don't go back to what enslaved you individually before. We need to not stand still because that makes us lukewarm. We need to not stand still. So don't go back. Don't stand still. But we need to go forward. We need to move forward and go forward and press towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus. So what do we do in 2022? The first was turn northward. Today, the title of today's message, the second thing we do is we need to see what God sees. See what God sees. Turn to your neighbor and say, I want to see what God sees. I want to see what God sees. Our scripture lesson for today comes from Numbers chapter 13, verses 30 through 33. Numbers 13, 30 through 33. And it reads as follows. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as, as, as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came, that came from giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight." And so we were in their sight like grasshoppers. Verse 30 again, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are able to overcome it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to speak your word, to preach, Lord God. It is an audacious time, and I have the audacity to be able to stand here and say behind this wooden desk, Lord God, that I am speaking your word. But Lord God, you are God above all, and I am just a human being. So I ask you, Lord God, to anoint me with your precious Holy Spirit and allow the words that come forth from my mouth to be pleasing to you and be guided by you. And where who I am and where what I am and the nature of what I am may stumble, Lord God, let the words that are heard, Lord God, by those that are here and those that are elsewhere, by those today and those in the future, let those words be only your words that are actually heard and digested. 
Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to make your face known here today. And Lord God, to make the minds and hearts of those here as fertile ground to receive your seed which will be planted. That it might germinate, grow, and bear much fruit for today, for tomorrow, and for times to come. For them to be able to feed upon and to share one with another. We love you and thank you and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen and amen again. See what God sees. See what God sees. Let's set the scene for this scripture. Here you have a couple reports being given. One report by Caleb says, let us go up at once and take possession of this land for we are able to overcome it. The other report from 10 of the other folks says, oh no, we can't go there. Them people are huge. They are great of stature. So not only are they physically large and imposing, but they're of authority. They have power. They're august men and women. And we looked at them and they will eat us up. And in their presence, we are like grasshoppers. We can be stepped on, pinched, and done away with, and it'd be over. Two different reports. Now, for those who are familiar with Numbers 13, you know that we have already had a situation where they have left Egypt and been delivered from the most powerful nation on earth with a dynamic deliverance by going through the Red Sea. That's already behind them. And they get there, and Moses says, we're going to this promised land, but before we go there, let me send 12 people, one from each tribe. So he did it fair. He didn't just pick some folk arbitrarily. He went and picked one that represented everybody. Somebody came to Mount Calvary and said, let me get one person from each ministry to go out and go into downtown and see if we could take over downtown and see if we could make it new. See if we can take possession of this land and be the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. And he said, one from each ministry. And you went there and you came back with a report. And two of them said, oh, yeah, let's do it. We can do it. We can do it right now. But the other 10 ministries, the reps from other 10 ministries, oh, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. God had already promised them that they were going to this land. And the two that went, the, excuse me, the 12 that went all saw the same thing with their natural eye. But two of them chose to see as God sees. Y'all ever gone somewhere before with somebody else? You may have seen the same movie, seen the same play, gone to the same sporting event or went to the same party or gathering. And you both were there at the same time, doing the same thing with the same folk. But then later when it was talked about, one person had one thing to say and somebody else had something entirely different to say. That can happen. That's possible. That took place here. So it's not to say you can't have your own perspective. It's not to say you can't have your own view. It's not to say that what you say is not valid. But what this scripture today is telling us and what this message is to say today is, ultimately, you have to see what God sees and not what you see yourself. Because remember, we told you last week that they took 11 days to get where they got. <laughs> to Mount Sinai. And they only needed, oh, excuse me, they took, a, they took a month and a half to get there, but they only needed 11 days to get to the promised land. But it ended up taking them almost 40 years. And the reason why that short distance took so long was because what we're reading right here, some of us have to understand that the reason why we have such a short distance from North Road to downtown, and we take so long to get there, is because there's doubters. There's people that are seeing like they want to see, and not how God sees. 
Numbers 14.34. You don't have to turn there now. Just mark it down. Numbers 14.34 and 35 says, according to the number of days, this is Moses talking on behalf of God, according to the number of days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, they were there for 40 days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. This is God talking through Moses. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there you shall die. Oh, my Lord. That's heavy, ain't it? God gave them a promise. He laid it out before them. He even showed them, I'm able. I delivered you from Egypt. I delivered you through the Red Sea. But they went out at God's word and chose to see with their own eyes. And God said, because you've decided to reject me, I'm going to reject you. You think you're going to be consumed in the promised land. I'm going to show you you're going to be consumed right here in the wilderness. And so what God did was everyone who was of military age, 20 and above, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb that came back with that good report, everyone else passed away in the wilderness before they were to see the promised land. I don't know about you, but I don't really want to pass away before I see the promise. I'd like to see it, I mean, if, God, if God wills. Know that, and know this very well, that God doesn't just deliver us from something. God delivers us to something. Ain't that good news? Y'all ought to shout from that. Some of us need to be delivered from something, but he doesn't just deliver you from, he delivers you to. He doesn't just take you out and put you in a vacuum. He doesn't just take that, that taste of alcohol off your lips. He doesn't just taste that drug, taste for the drug. He delivers you to something else. He doesn't just deliver you from wanting to get down and lay down in every bed you can find. He delivers you to something else. God knows that if he just leaves you in a vacuum, you're going to go right back to where you came. He don't just deliver you from, he delivers you to. What do you see? Do you see what God sees? So I'm going to make three quick points about seeing and hopefully for those who didn't get it already, we'll get it through this point. So I know that some of you already got it, amen. And that's all right, but there's other people that need it, amen. So if you didn't get it, listen to these three points, and maybe that'll help you explain it to somebody else. The first way you can see is with your natural eye. With your natural eye. That's just staying still. You only notice uh, and accept what's in front of you. If you only notice and what's accepts in front of you, you ain't going. Nowhere. If all you see is poverty and all you notice is poverty, guess what all you're going to have? Poverty. If all you see and all you notice is bad times and abuse and, and, and turmoil, that's, that's all you're going to get because that's all you see. You can't go to where you don't see. I remember one time I was taken to a tour in the mountains in uh, Kentucky. I was in the Mammoth Mountain. And we go deep into the cave, which I wasn't too happy about, amen. <laughs> I'm a large brother, parts of the cave weren't too large, amen. So I'm in there, and they wanted to demonstrate something to us. They said, some of you all have never seen absolute darkness. You know, it might be dark at night, but there's a moon, there's stars, there's ambient light from the city or whatever like that. So we need everybody to stand perfectly still, and we're going to hit the lights, and there ain't no lights in this cave. And I want you to notice. So they turn the lights off. Oh my goodness. It was absolute darkness. But one thing we noticed when the light came back on, there were some people that were in a completely different position. And it was because you lose all sense of positioning when it's absolutely dark. And that's why they told us to stand still. Because if you try to move, you might think you took one step, but you might have taken three or four. You don't really know. You know, but that's the same with the natural eye. When you're only looking with the natural eye, you need to stay still. I remember when I was in seminary, I uh, 
began to see things down the hall that were blurry. We had a really long hallway in the seminary uh, dorm I was in. And uh, I began to not see people as well down the hall. And I just said, I must be really stressed out because I can't really see too good. Something must be wrong. I need to check my stress or whatever like that, you know, because I've always had great vision. My family used to call me Eagle Eye. When we're in the car driving places when we're going down the road. If they want to know what a sign said way down the road before they see it, they say, Glenn, what does it say? I say, oh, it says blah, blah, this or blah, blah, that. I had, I had vision like a fighter pilot. Didn't have the fighter pilot size, but I had the vision like a fighter pilot. So I was used to seeing good, you know. So I get to the doctor. And we go, and I go to the opt optometrist and stuff, and he's looking in my eyes. And he goes, everything's just fine. I'm like, oh, thank the Lord. And he goes, you're just nearsighted. I said, what? <laughs> I felt like Fred Sanford had a heart attack. I was like, no, because that was terrible to me. But it was fine for him because it was easily correctable. You could just put on some lenses in front and see better. But my vision had gone it's bad so slowly for so long, I didn't even know what had happened. I didn't even notice it. And some of us have been looking with our natural eyes so long that even our natural vision has been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And I tell you, that I'm not ashamed with my big bad male self. When I went to the eye doctor and went and got my glasses and I'm in the room and I put those glasses on, I wept in front of everybody because I didn't know how blind I had gotten. I didn't know that I couldn't see right. I was like, wow, this is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> I had forgotten. So no, you can look with your natural eye, but your natural eye can be deceiving. And you only notice and accept what's in front of you, you end up being still. And what we say about stillness, that's lukewarmness. And God said he'll vomit you out for that. The second way you can see, first is the natural eye, but the second is the mental eye. The mental eye. And the mental eye is kind of like going backwards, but it's not always bad. Sometimes you see with your mental eye, and it skews what you're looking at, because of your own past pain. Anybody ever been hurt before? Anybody ever experienced pain before? So when you see something that looks like your experience, you see it through that lens of pain. If you see a person that looks like your abuser, if you see a person that looks like somebody who betrayed you, then even though that person you're looking at may not have done anything, you start going, mm, I gotta be weary of this person. Looks like that person that messed me over. Or if you run into a situation or a circumstance that kind of matches what happened when you got that pain before, you don't want to have nothing to do with it. And so you reject it and go, no, I'm not going there. I can't go there. I cannot make it. And so you can see with your natural eye, but you can also see with your mental eye, you can start interpreting what you're looking at that goes even beyond your mental eye, just like those 10 spies did. Sure, those people look big, but what evidence do they have that they're going to devour them? What evidence did they have that they were going to eat them up? What evidence did they have of how they saw them? They don't know that. But they had been devoured. They had been eaten up. They had been taken advantage of, amen, all those years. As God sees they saw the pain and hurt from their past. So be careful what you're looking at. That you're not just looking with your natural eye, you're not just looking with your mental eye. Sometimes looking backwards through your mental eye actually can be okay. Because sometimes, not only do you have hurt in the past, sometimes there's a miracle in your memory. Anybody have a miracle in their memory? <laughs> you look back and you say, I had this bill before and God saw me through. I was going to be homeless before, but he kept me with a roof over my head. He did it before, he'll what? He'll do it again. I remember I was in a situation where I had no job and I didn't know how I was going to get my next meal, but guess what? I didn't lose a pound. He did it before, he'll do it again. I remember the doctors told me I only had one month to live. And here it is three years later, there's a miracle in your memory. And you can look back over your life and think those things over and your mental eye can propel you forward. 
And that's what those ten needed, but Joshua and Caleb had it. They didn't look through the bass hurt. They looked back to that memory. We were held captive by the most powerful nation on earth, and God sent them a plague and got them to get rid of us. He not only told us to leave, he gave us all their wealth <laughs> with them. So they had a miracle in their memory. God already did. God promised he was going to deliver. Yeah, it didn't come in my time. It didn't come in your time. But he promised deliverance, and it came. He did it before. He'll do it again. God is not a man that he would lie. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you've got to look through your mental eye, folk, look through the miracle in your memory and not through the pain in your past. you got your natural eye. you got your mental eye. But then you have your eye of faith spiritual eye, your eye of faith. Your eye of faith is what God sees. By faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. You walk by faith and by sight. When you're in that cave and the light goes out, stand still. You can't see with your natural eye. When you're going into an area that looks completely dark to you and you don't know where to go, Walk by faith and not by sight. And your faith is built on the word of God. So when God gives a word, you walk on that. You can be guaranteed you will never be wrong. Philippians 3. We read this last week. Forgetting those things which are... And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the... For the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So know that we're to see as God sees. We all have natural eyes. And know that those natural eyes can deceive us. And know that they can make us just stand still. And know that we have mental eyes. But we can make a choice with that mental eye to look through the past pain. Or look through the miracle of our memory. But with the eye of faith, we walk by faith, not by sight. We stand on God's word. The people of God here at Mount Calvary today, to the people of God all over the world, it is time to see what God sees. It's time to do as God says. The congregation, the crowd, took the word of the ten, not the two. Now, that's important to notice. Because God had a punishment for the congregation. Ten that saw it, and the congregation didn't believe him, he may have just left them ten. But they chose to believe the natural man rather than the word of God. Don't raise your hand. Don't say amen. Just meditate on it. How many of us have believed the words of a natural man rather than the word of God? We need to reject that and listen to the testimony of the prophets. And in this case, that was Joshua and Caleb. So they didn't get to this land. And we want to go to the promised land. But what do we see when we look at our own lives? What do we see and how are we looking at it? When we look at the vacant land right out there, right to my left, your right, that we're sitting on, what do we see there? Do we just see with our natural eyes? Do we see with the eyes of past pain? We were supposed to build a building, and we, there ain't no building there. I'm hurt by that. We, we gave money, and we were going to build this building. Building ain't show up. Oh. Or do we see through the miracle of memory, knowing that we didn't even have that land, that we were bequeathed that land, that God provided that land miraculously, and even offered more to us, but we didn't take it, you know? So what do we see when we look at the needs in our community up the road and all around us? 
what do we see? Do we see that they can be met? Or do we see that it's too much? We can't handle it. What are we seeing? So we have a choice here. We can be those spies that saw as God sees. We can see the spies that saw with a natural eye and saw with the pain from their past. We can be the congregation who believes the word that, that, that wasn't true, the word that wasn't God's word. And we can be left behind. But there's even people that might even believe and see what God sees that don't make it to the promised land. And that's all right. Because guess who else didn't make it? Moses. He didn't make it there. He led them all the way as God would have them to do, but he did not make it there. He was left right where he was. He didn't make it there. Was it because he was evil? No, it wasn't because he was evil. But that was God's plan. And we can get into that another day. But we know that even our own lifetime. Who was that? The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday we're going to celebrate in not too long. He says, I've seen the mountaintop. <laughs> he talked about how he saw the other side. He looked over. He said, I may not what? Get there with you. <laughs> he didn't make it. He was assassinated soon after. And I'm telling you as pastor of this church, I have seen what Mount Calvary can do and what Mount Calvary can be and what Orangeburg can be and where Orangeburg will go. I may not get there with you, but it don't matter. Guess what? Because anything worth doing takes more than a human lifetime. And if I have to lay my blood, sweat, and tears down here with you all to get starting and get moving, then we'll do just that. But you as a congregation need to accept what God sees. Because if you as a congregation don't accept what God sees, guess what? We're subject to the wilderness yet again. You are hearing from me just like they heard from Joshua and Caleb that God has a promised land for us to be the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. If you're willing to accept that and follow God's lead, not my lead, because remember, I may not get there. Part of the reason why God may not have had them go and may not have me go is because he don't want to get confused. Moses didn't make you to the promised land. MLK didn't make you to no promised land. And I ain't going to get you there. Not by might nor by power, but what? By my spirit, says the Lord. What do we do in 2022? The first answer is to turn north to go northward to start heading to that promise the second thing is to begin to see as God sees can't see what God sees if you don't know God's word amen so we need to start reading that word what do we do in 2022 amen amen stand to your feet if you can praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord God has mighty and wonderful things for us individually and collectively. There are promised lands, as we talked about last week, that each and every one of you, God has for you. I don't know what they are. You know what they are. And if you don't know what they are, just continue to ask him. He'll show you and he'll reveal it. But he is good to his word and he can get you there. Now, I don't know what it is for you individually, but I do know what it is for the church, because guess what? God called me here, and y'all called me here. And he has made me the shepherd of this house, and he has given me the accountability and responsibility to know where we need to go and what we need to do. And I'm sharing that with you right now. And he is able to do it, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. By his spirit by his spirit. If you're here today and you don't have that personal relationship with him, if all, all throughout your life you've only been able to see with your natural eye or with your mental eye, you've never seen with an eye of faith, you've never seen with the eye of the spirit, and you want to be in close relationship with him and hear him and see him, he's here for us. Nothing magical you need to do because guess what? He already did it. Jesus, while there were nails in his wrists and nails in his feet, said, it is finished. 
He did everything. It's already done. All we have to do is accept it and believe it. If that's you today and you want to accept and believe that Jesus died for you and me, but didn't just die as Romans 8 said, he rose again for you and me. It's one thing to lay down your life for someone. It's another thing to rise up for someone. He rose up for us. He rose up for you. And if you want to accept him for rising up for you, all you have to do is lift your hand and we'll say a prayer with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Make your way around if you wish. Raise your hand and we will say a prayer with you. Amen. Amen. And you can receive him. You can receive him. Deacons get her name. If you wish to pray a prayer of salvation, praise the Lord. And you can receive him. And you can receive him. And you can receive him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While we're still tending to that call, that call is still open. The doors of the church are open. If you wish to worship God, if you wish to walk and journey with God, with us here at Mount Calvary, this is your opportunity to join us in that journey. And you can just lift your hand or make your way forward and we'll speak with you and we'll start you on the process of being in journey with us. Amen? Amen. Wants to see Jesus? Wants to see Jesus? Wants to see Jesus? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord. Sister Jamie Gonzalez has faithfully raised her hand and wishes for us to pray for her. And as we're praying for her and with her in our distance setting, we're going to say a prayer of salvation which every single one of you all can repeat together and know that if you don't know Jesus, he, you can know him at this very moment. And so I'll say that prayer and I'll lead you in it and you repeat the words after me. And then after that, we will pray for Sister Jamie in general. Amen. So let's all bow our heads and close our eyes and repeat after me. Dear Lord, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, knowing that you sent your son to live, to die, and to rise again, to save our souls. We accept his sacrifice. We accept his lordship. And we pledge this moment to follow you and to follow him through the help of the Holy Spirit. I accept you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Let's pray for Sister Jamie. Praise the Lord. If you said that prayer and you were not saved, that is a prayer that has you saved. And you should be able to begin at this moment miraculously, not just to see with your natural eye or your mental eye, but to see with eyes of the faith and eyes of the spirit. If you said that prayer from distance or here and you wish to know more, we will not leave you alone in this journey. Contact me directly or contact a deacon if you already have a deacon. But whatever you need to do, contact, reach out. And we're right here to speak with you and to be with you and to guide you. Now let's pray for Miss Jamie Gonzalez. Lord God, we just thank you for her, Lord, right, right now in the mind of Jesus, for her courage and her faithfulness to be able to lift her hand to you and to surrender and to know that she needs you more than anyone or anything else. So Lord God, we pray blessings on her life and grace on her life, Lord God, and forgiveness in her life. Forgiveness for those who have done her wrong, Lord God. And we pray forgiveness for those things that have happened to her, Lord God, that she needs to release in Jesus' name. That she has a mighty and miraculous cleansing in her life. That her natural eyes will be wonderful, Lord God, but when she's looking through that mental eye, she will only see the memories, Lord God, the memories of the miracles, Lord God. And will open up her spiritual eyes and take away the veil and let her see what you see. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen, amen, amen. amen.
You may be seated where you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.